Hey everybody, this is Fully Off and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to build this really simple, really efficient AFK fish farm in 1.13. So if you want to jump straight into building this bad boy, I'll put a link in the description taking you straight to the main tutorial. However, if you want to hear some really interesting facts about fishing, stick around and I'll tell you. Now every time a player casts his rod into a body of water, it has to wait a random amount of time and that time is between 5 and 45 seconds. However, there are several ways that you can decrease the amount of time you have to wait. The first one being having lure on your rod. For every level of lure you have on your rod, you decrease the amount of time you have to wait by 5 seconds. So you cast into the water, your bobber, is given a random amount of time before a fish will bite. And if you have lure one on your rod, that's reduced by five seconds. If you have lure two on your rod, it's reduced by 10 seconds. If you have lure three on your rod, it's reduced by 15 seconds. So you, as you can see, having lure three on your rod will significantly reduce the amount of time. The second way to reduce the amount of time you have to wait between catching a fish is to fish while it's raining. If the piece of water that your bob is sitting in is being rained on, it reduces the amount of time you have to wait between catching a fish by a further 20%. Now you can't just fish while it's raining outside if you're inside. The piece of water that you're fishing in needs to have direct access to the sky and also cannot be blocked by glass or water or anything that stops the rain from hitting the water. So the rain has to be falling onto the water, as you can see there. If we were to put a pane of glass above there, it would stop the rain from hitting the water and that wouldn't work. So to get your extra 20%, you need rain to be falling directly onto your bobber. Conversely, if your water block doesn't have direct access to the sky like that, then it could double the amount of time you have to wait between catching fish. So if you don't have an enchanted rod, potentially you could be waiting one and a half minutes between catching fish. So don't build this underground. If you have to build this underground and you need to put a block above the water, then you have to use a transparent block. You'll have to use glass. But you can't use water and you can't use leaf blocks. So if you build this underground and you have trees above you, then this won't work. If you're building this under the sea, it won't work. Well, it will work, but it will be significantly slower. And also remember, if you put a glass block over the top of it, it will have access to the sky, but it won't have access to rainfall. So you won't get your added 20% discount for having rain falling on your water block. Now let's have a look at what kind of fish you can catch. Now when you're fishing, it chooses from three different categories. It chooses from fish, from treasure, or from junk. Now there's a 100% chance when you cast your rod into a piece of water that you will catch something. There's an 85% chance that it'll be a fish. There's a 5% chance that it will be treasure. And there is a 10% chance that it will be a junk item. If it's a fish category that's chosen, there's a 60% chance that it's going to be a cod. There's a 25% chance that it's going to be a salmon. There's a 2% chance that it's going to be a tropical fish. And there's a 13% chance that it's going to be a puffer fish. If the category chosen is going to be treasure, then there's a 14.3% chance that it will either be an enchanted bow, an enchanted rod, an enchanted book, a name tag, a lily pad, a saddle, or a nautilus shell. If you're lucky enough to catch yourself an enchanted rod, bow, or book, then it'll have the same enchants as you'd get for a level 30 enchantment on an enchanting table. However, the bow and the rod will be significantly damaged. But on the plus side, you could get enchantments on the bow, the rod and the book that aren't available on an enchanting table. If you manage to bag yourself a bit of junk, 
there's a 12% chance that it's going to be a bowl, a 2.4% chance that it's going to be a normal rod, a 12% chance it's going to be some leather, 12% chance it's going to be some leather boots, a 12% chance it's going to be some rotting flesh, a 6% chance it's going to be a stick, 6% chance it's going to be some string, 12% chance it's going to be a bottle of water, 12% chance it's going to be a bone, a 1.2% chance it's going to be some ink, and a 12% chance it's going to be a tripwire hook. Now I know that doesn't add up to 100%, but you're just going to have to blame the wiki for that. Now if you want to catch more treasure and less fish and junk, you need to put luck of the sea on your rod. Each level of luck of the sea decreases the chance of junk and fish and increases your chance of treasure. So if you put luck of the sea 1 on your rod, you'll decrease the chance of catching a fish from 85% to 84.8%. If you put luck of the sea 2 on your rod, you'll decrease that to 84.7%. And if you put luck of the sea 3 on your rod, you'll decrease the chance of catching any type of fish to 84.5%. If you have luck of the sea 1 on your rod, you're going to decrease the chance of catching junk from 10% to 8.1%. If you have luck of the sea 2 on your rod, you'll decrease that down to 6.1%. And if you have luck of the sea 3 on your rod, you're going to decrease the chances of catching junk to 4.2%. So that means that if you have luck of the sea 1 on your rod, you'll increase the chance of catching treasure from 5% to 7.1%. If you have luck of the C2, you're going to increase that to 9.2%. And if you have luck of the C3 on your rod, you'll increase the chance of getting treasure to 11.3%. You'll almost double your chances of catching treasure. So now you're an expert on fishing, I'll show you how this works. You need to walk up to the front of it and you need to cast just underneath the hitbox of the string. You can see the hitbox of the string there, it's just the square hitbox. You want to cast just below that at the trap door, at the metal trap door. If you cast too low, that happens. And if you cast too high and hit the string, that happens. You need to be casting at the metal trap door just below the string. And then as soon as the trap door opens, you'll be casting at the note block. And as soon as you get a bite, the trap door closes and you catch your fish. Now in 1.12, you could actually F11 and go AFK, continually fishing. Unfortunately, they've patched that and you can no longer do it. So you can either put a weight on your mouse, but in fairness, I do find that quite difficult. Or you can change your right mouse button to a key on the keyboard and then just put a weight on the keyboard instead, which I think is a much simpler idea. So to build it, you're going to need a stack of your blocks of choice. We're using quartz. You're going to need two stairs. You're going to need a bucket of water, two chests, two hoppers, a stone pressure plate. It, in fairness, it can be any pressure plate. We're using stone. An iron trap door. Now this has to be iron. It can't be wood. A note block, some string, two tripwire hooks three pieces of dust and optionally you might need a bit of glowstone and you might need a repeater if you're doing this on a server you might need a repeater if you're doing this on your own world on your own pc you won't but due to the lag on a server you might need a repeater so just bear that in mind so grab all your gear and then you need to find an area that is five wide by four deep and this is where we're going to be building our farm so the first thing to do is you need to find the center. So find the center of where you want the farm to be built. Stick yourself down a block. On top of the block, put yourself down a pressure plate. Now to the left of that, you want to stick down your two chests like that. Then you want to grab your hoppers, whiz around the back, and you want to put one hopper facing into the chest and then one hopper facing into that hopper. Now make sure that your hoppers are pointing or that hopper is pointing into that hopper and that hopper is pointing into that chest. If you have that pointing straight down, obviously this won't work. 
Then grab yourself your two stairs and you need to put your stairs on top of your chest so you can still open your chest. But you want the illusion that it's a solid block. So you want to stand at this end of your chest. You're going to have to crouch and put down the block there. So when you look at it from this side, it's a solid block. And then go around the back facing the front of your farm and put your other stair on that chest there. So now you've got the solid block effect from this side, the solid block effect from the front, but you can still access your chest. If we were to just put two solid blocks above there, your chest wouldn't work. Now grab your solid blocks again. You need to stick a temporary block on top of the hopper there. And then you want to put a block on this side of it, a block on the back of that block, and a block there. Then you can delete or you can knock out the block that's in the middle above the hoppers. So now you're left with that. Now stick down another temporary block on top of that one and put a block next to it. You can then get rid of that. And then put a temporary block on top of that block and then a block there. Get rid of that. So now you've got that. Now you can take out your two tripwire hooks. You need to put one tripwire hook on there and one tripwire hook on the opposite side on there. And then stick a piece of string in the middle. Now take out your iron trap door and you need to put an iron trap door on this block here. The block at the back, this one, the one here. But you can't have it facing front to back. When it opens, it has to open either to the left or to the right. You can't have it opening front to back, otherwise it won't work. So you need to put it down by standing over one side. And it doesn't matter which side it opens, as long as it opens to the side. So either stand the left or the right and put down your trap door. But don't stand in front or behind when you place it, otherwise the trap door will open the wrong way. Now grab your solid blocks again, put another block there, put your note block on top of it. And unless you want to hear this, you want to stick a solid block on top of it. And now you won't hear anything. Now it's time to add the little bit of redstone. So come over to the right hand side. You need to put a block down underneath the block that the tripwire hook is on and you need to put a blob of redstone dust on top of it. So every time the tripwire hook is activated, the string is activated, the tripwire hook's activated, it will activate that dust. And you want to come round the back and put another solid block there and one there. And then just extend the dust round the corner. So it's now going into the block that's got the iron trap door above it. So now every time this piece of tripwire is activated, the trap door comes up. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if we had the trap door facing front to back, that would happen. And that wouldn't, it wouldn't allow you to, to, uh, to cast your rod. So it's important that when you put your trap door down, that you put it down from the side. So when it opens, it opens up either to the right or to the left. Doesn't matter which, either is good. So now you've got that. So now all we have to do is throw in some water and then we can test it. So get your water and throw your water in there so it's above your hopper. Now take out your rod and you need to stand in front of the farm. Look up at the trap door. You need to get your little cursor below the hitbox of the string, but above the block that's at the back of sort of behind the water. So you need to be pointing at the trap door and then just right click. And that happens and just hold down the right button and you'll continually fish until you catch something. And as soon as you catch something, the bob's going to go down below the water, which is going to deactivate your trip wire, which is going to close your trap door, which means that you'll pull your rod back in again, catch your fish, and then you'll recast. So now you can stick a weight on your right mouse button if you want to, or as I mentioned earlier, change your right mouse button for a button on your keyboard and then put something on your keyboard. Just a shame that they've patched up the F11 trick. Now, if you're using this on a server, there may be a little bit of lag. So just having the three pieces of dust might not work. 
So this is where you might need your repeater. So if you're having a problem, let me just put a repeater in and stick a few ticks on it so I can show you my problem uh, or the problem that you might be having. If you're on a server and this is happening to you, we've got a fix for it. Now I've seen some farms that can't fix this. If this is happening to you with some other farms, then you're kajiggered, as they say. However, on this one, you can fix it. Get yourself around to the back and just change the tick rate on the repeater, starting at one, change it to two, back around the front, try again. Okay, it's not working. Around the back, three ticks. Around the front, try again. There you go, third time's a charm. So try it first of all without a repeater, and if it doesn't work, then you can try repeater on varying ticks until you get it to work. Brilliant. So now all you have to do is prodify it up. So grab your block of choice and just stick some blocks over the front of it. And then whiz yourself over the back and you can just put a few blocks over the back so you can't see through. Being careful not to cover the water. Remember what we said earlier on? That water block has to have access at least to the sky. Uh, if you can, give it access to rainfall, but at least you need it to have access to the sky. Otherwise, it's just going to take forever for you to catch anything. So stick yourself in another block there, one block there, one block there. There you go. Now, if you built this underground or you built this in a room and you need a bit of lighting in here, you can always replace that back block with a bit of glowstone to give you a bit of light. And then you can stand here and fish to your heart's content. Now, if you want to add a bit more storage, you put a few store, a few more chests underneath. You can do just, just stick yourself down some chests underneath like this with a few hoppers if you want to. I have found though that when I've been using these farms, you can generate quite a lot of rubbish. And if you've got several chests, you have to go through each chest and find out what you want to keep, what you want to throw away. It's just very time consuming. So I do find it easier just to have one or two chests and that way it doesn't take that long to go through all of the goodies that you've got in there. So there you go, everybody. That's how you build a really simple, super efficient AFK fish farm that works in 1.13. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, everybody. If you have, please don't forget to leave it a like. And if you really loved it, don't forget to subscribe for future tutorials. This is Frilly Off, and I'm out of here.